to him, stop. She asked for my number, what could I do? Yeah, right. Um, we're landing in half an hour, you want to uh, clean up? Yeah. What about him? Uh, he's flying into a shit storm. Let's let him sleep while he can. As a matter of fact, I wasn't sleeping. Thanks anyway, man. Told you not to use my first name. Sorry. Detective. I was wondering if I could ask you a favor. You seem like a decent enough sort of bloke. What favor? Inside pocket of my jacket. I'm hardly in a position to do anything, am I? That's mum. If you could see she gets that, I'd appreciate it. Ah, oh, she can come and see you, Conway. You can give it to her yeah, yourself. No, she can't get around. She's got a mess. But you guys aren't going to take me to see her, are you? See, so ring her from Romano. I mean, she'd be glad to hear your yeah, voice. You, you can keep a letter, detective. You can take it out and you can hold it. You can't cherish a phone call. It's my mother. It's just a favour. Uh, sleeping beauty's awake. Good morning. Yeah, good for me, maybe. Definitely not so good for you, mate. Here we go. What? No prezzies? Saving the T-shirts for later. Wave the organised back door. Yeah, to stop the media vultures from having a feeding frenzy. Mr. Conway, Detective Maplethorpe and Freeman. Pleased to meet you. I bet you are. Nice holiday? I wish. I thought I was going straight to a man. You're here till the press get tired and go home. No spa bath, I'm afraid. You'll have to cope. Sorry, mate, no press. I'm not press, I'm in the job. Mike Davies, used to be in homicide. What can we do for you, Mike? Heard your redirection on the band. I was the one who handled the scumbag's case. Just thought I might renew the acquaintance. But you never thought this day would come, Conway. Four walls now, mate. For life. Your parole officer hasn't even been born. Just as vindictive a bastard as ever, eh, Don't go ahead, okay, Mike. You had your look. Now back off. Fair enough. I hate to hold you up. The sooner this arsehole's inside, the better. We got company, let's go! Hey, Conway! I'll be in court when they send you down, son. See if you're still smiling then, you arsehole! Don't forget me. Conway, who fled this country after being charged with the 1999 murder of photographic... Oh, what a monumental cock-up. ...killed whilst trying to escape custody on his return to Australia this morning. Conway had been extradited from Britain for over six Your years... Your crew given their statements? Yeah, ethical stand-ups are reviewing the tapes. Oh, the dead girl's father, a.k.a. the inner spring Kim. No, I can't help wondering why Conway didn't fight extradition proceedings. It's been exercising my mind, too. I mean, he didn't say anything of significance when your team picked him up in London? As far as I know, according to them, he was polite, respectful, basically said nothing. ...during an argument with Conway, a government driver, and her secret lover. Oh, well, maybe they've done us a favour this time. Well, by assuming he was trying to escape, if what your boys are saying is true, that wasn't the case, was it? He killed himself. The press is stupid. Why would he do that? To piss us off, if you ask me. Sure, Duncan. He killed himself just to piss you off. I suggest you all get home. You've given your statements. To what now, Sergeant? Oh, nothing, as far as I can see. It wasn't anybody's fault, unless there's something that I don't know about. OK, uh, well, I'll let you know if they need anything further. Do not talk to the press. That goes without saying. And Simon and Matt put together the extradition report tomorrow and go through the original case notes, see if there's anything there that might explain what was in his head at the time. 
Well, Jennifer, the superintendent wants to see you before you go. What for? Didn't say. Oh, Detective Mapplethorpe. Uh, sorry, I have to be somewhere. Um, are you doing all right now? Yes, I'm fine, thanks. You're back on duty sooner than expected. What's it been, two weeks? Uh, three, just over. Mm, unfortunate business. Are the media leaving you alone? Uh, yes, they are now. It's old business. <laughs> well, you were wise to keep your head down. Only way to deal with those buggers. Was there anything else? Oh, the mother of the boy you shot, Victoria Semple. She wants a meeting with you. A meeting? At this stage, it's an informal request. One of the partners in her law firm rang me. He's of the opinion that a face-to-face -face with you might help her find some closure over her son's death. So, um, think about it. Let me know what you decide. No pressure. You said at this stage it's an informal request. What does that mean? Well, it's possible Miss Semple could make a fuss. Nothing was said, but it is important to read between the lines with these things. Are you ordering me to do this? Not at all. It's entirely your decision. Let me know. Good night, Detective. I mean, she probably wants you to apologise for her son's death. It's usually what they mean by closure. I've got nothing to apologise for. Brett Semple was off his nut. We're lucky we're not dead. Morning, Jennifer. Morning. You OK? Something up? <sighs> Conway. It's a long way to come to kill yourself. Maybe he didn't want to face his last day in court. Maybe. Hilda Conway. Jim Conway's mother. He gave it to me, he asked me to pass it on to her. And you agreed? Well, given what's happened, this could be a suicide note. Gee, he had you picked, didn't he? It's his mother. So give it to Wolfie with an apology. I think he's at his breakfast. Yeah, it's a bit late for that. I, mean, I accepted responsibility the moment I let Conway give it to me. And a mother deserves the last letter from your son, Matt Conway. Oh, she does. I'll make it clear. She has to tell us if it's relevant. If it isn't, well, it's none of our business. Oh, so I'll be coming with you. Yeah. Maybe she's not. She's sick. Conway said that she's sick. Mrs. Conway? Yes, what do you want? I'm Detective Ryan, and this is um, Detective Mapplethorpe. I already know about Jim. Yes. Um, um, we're sorry for your loss. Came to uh, give you a letter from your son? Oh, yes. Jim said someone might come. He said that to you? No. Mrs. Conway, if this has any bearing on your son's death or on the death of Suzanne Pendleton, we may need to take it in as evidence. Hilda. Would you call me Hilda? That's my name. OK. Hilda. <sighs> what did you mean Jim said someone might come? With this letter. He phoned me from Spain. That was just before he went to England and was arrested. And he said if somebody should come with this letter, I was to give them something in return. Come inside. Jim said I could open it. I can tell you what's inside, but you'll want to read it yourself, I suppose. Now, that explains exactly what happened the night Suzanne Fendleton died. You mean this is your son's confession? No, dear, it's not a confession. My son didn't kill anyone. Hilda, may I? Oh, well, there's nothing really to interest you there. It's just he loves me. He's sorry for everything he put me through, you know, this sort of thing. And you believe this, that he didn't kill Suzanne Fendleton? Throwing a young woman off a balcony, no. He was not capable of murder. So you're saying someone else killed Suzanne Fendleton? Well, Jim says so. It's in there. It's on page 10. You look. They tempted him with the sort of life he always dreamed about. And he couldn't resist, you see. But somebody else killed the girl, all right. Alex, 
Zamet. The cabinet minister. Sorry, Sarge, we know it's way out of left field. And how long has Hilda Conway been sitting on this particular time bomb? Well, she got the envelope around the same time her son was arrested in London. He posted it before he left Spain. And you were at Hilda Conway's, and let me get this right, because you wanted to give her another letter, a letter which Jim Conway gave you on the flight going over, a letter which I'm hearing about for the first time now. <laughs> what was I supposed to do, Sarge? It was to his mother. After he killed himself, I... Oh, I just wanted to make sure she got it. I covered the bases. Well, you didn't go with this one? No, I didn't expect this. She let us see the letter, Sarge. There's nothing in it, just mother and son stuff. Mm, very touching. And in this document, Jim Conway specifically names Alec Zamet as the girl's killer. Black and white. And more than just the name, the whole thing. He claims that Zamet was up there with her. We checked. Uh, Jim Conway was the minister's chauffeur at the time. He claims, in there, that he was standing down by the car when Suzanne Fendleton came off the balcony. Zamet persuaded him to say he was the one who was with her. Persuaded how? Half a million dollars. I mean, he wasn't supposed to be confessing to a murder, just claiming to have witnessed an accident. Yeah, initially, he fed him the story about Suzanne standing on a chair trying to change a light bulb on the balcony when she fell, but that went sour when the physical evidence suggested that there was no way she could have fallen off the chair and gone over the balcony. She had to have been pushed hard. So he bumped up the offer to two million. The ticket to nowhere said he could make Conway disappear forever. Jim went for it. Spain, here I come. Jim. The idea was to make it look like Conway had done a runner so that Zamet was in the clear. The statement is very convincing, Sarge. He's got all the details down. He's had six years to get all the details down. You don't charge a cabinet minister on the word of someone like Jim Conway. The man has spent six years in Spain laughing at us under the non-extradition umbrella and now we're supposed to believe he is innocent? This is the word of a man who is now dead and cannot be cross-examined. It's a legal document, Sarge. An affidavit witnessed by a solicitor. A law firm in Spain. Conway covered all his bases, too. Bernice, why do you keep letting your people do these things to me? It's nothing personal, Bill, I can assure you. I thought this was how you wanted things. I smell a hot potato, I tell you about it. Well, I don't see what the problem is. Conway's dead. Why stir the pot if we don't have to? Well, I don't think his mother would necessarily share that point of view. And even if he is dead, the affidavit's still there, isn't it? How do we know he hasn't instructed his lawyers in Spain to go public if nothing's done about it? Bloody hell. All right, we move on it, but in no way, shape, or form is that affidavit to be mentioned in any investigation. It doesn't go beyond these four walls. We're simply following up on Conway's suicide. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Who was the lead on the original investigation? Mike Davies. Right. Get him into Wolf's office. We'll show our faces down there. A bit of blood on the floor should make the point. Political agendas. This is not simply just a and matter of good government. It's a question of social responsibility. If we don't place the welfare of our young people at the very forefront of our aspirations... This is going to get very ugly. And not just for Alexander. Conway the names of people in defect. The examined bribe to swing him a dodgy passport. They are going down. Why have you got the affidavit? I thought that Wolfie had the only copy. You didn't photocopy it, you dick. Yeah, I don't remember asking you guys to have a look at it. Matt, why the hell would you do that? I don't know. I'll shred it. Will that make you happy? This is all we damn well need with Zamet about to front a major international conference. That affidavit stays under wraps. Clear? They're giving the case back to Davies. He isn't even in homicide anymore. No, I know that, but as the original investigator, he gets first crack on it. But he hates Jim Conway's guts. I mean, how much effort is he going to put into proving that he didn't kill that girl? Nevertheless, we pass the case notes back to Davies. Oh, come on, Sergeant. This is just all political bullshit. Matt. Suzanne Fendleton's a little fish, mate. She doesn't count. That's enough. The decision's already been made. Thank you. That's all. Matt, one moment. I'm not particularly interested in your analysis of why Davies gets this case, but other people might be. So I suggest you keep your opinions to yourself unless you want to flush your career down the toilet. You know why I'm in this job, Sarge. Either they all matter or none of them do. Isn't that how it's supposed to work? Sometimes this job really shits me. I don't see what your problem is, Matt. No, 
Maybe that's because all you ever worry about is your career, Duncan. Hey, Ryan. Thanks for bloody nothing. Hey, don't blame him, mate. If you'd done your job properly in the first place, we wouldn't be here. What did you say? See, that's why I hate drinking here. Work, play, play, work. Let's not get them confused. No problem, you're right. No problem. No problem. I have to reopen this investigation with my hands tied behind my back. If there's one word about that prick's written statement, we're all on the quiver. You got that, son? Have you? It's a funny walk. It's all to do with having a boot up your ass. <laughs> Swallow up, Matt. Simon's right. Davies is the one who stuffed up. Mm. It's his problem. Anyway, if Conway was so keen on his version of the truth coming out, why'd he kill himself? Why didn't he just make an official statement? I don't know. What I do know is that that letter he asked me to give to his mother was kind of a a uh, test or something. Something I had to do so she'd hand us that information. It's a bit out there, mate. No. The trust thing. Make sure the truth came out. All the lies. What if he was just trying to get examined? We're not going to find out either way, are we? Because it's like it's all just going to get swept under the carpet. Our little friend, Davies. <laughs> You'd be quite happy pushing the broom. Good night. Dad, just I've got some work to do. Go back to sleep. The wounds not If we keep believing, then we gotta feel as it goes by the storm it's so Tell me this hasn't got something to do with Jim Conway. Look, just let me do what's right, okay? Stay in the bloody car if you don't want to get involved. I don't want to get involved. All right, so what am I not getting involved in? The bloke who lives there, Harry McIntosh. He was the caretaker at the apartment block where Suzanne Fendleton was killed. Okay, he talked to Davies at the scene, but there's no formal record of any statement, so... Why not? That's what I want to find out. Matt, it is a no-win situation. Leave it to Davies. What? So he could not interview the guy again? Look, according to Conway's affidavit, oh. Harry McIntosh was standing with him by the car when Susan Fendleton came off that balcony. He was a witness. So you tell me he's not getting paid off. Yeah, if Conway's telling the truth. I'd offer you a drink, but you're on duty, right? That's correct, Mr McIntosh. Besides, I've got an appointment. Busy life. <laughs> Retirement's not all it's cracked up to be. It's a lot better. <laughs> now, uh, what's this about? Suzanne Fendleton. She was murdered six years ago at an apartment block where you were caretaker. Right. Nasty business. How well did you know her? She always gave me a gift at Christmas, but she could afford to, couldn't she? Her father was one of those um, self-made types. Uh, what was it again? The uh, Inner Spring King beds. <laughs> Um, I don't really know much about what happened, really. Jim Conway, the man charged with her murder, he says you do. Uh, Conway went AWOL, didn't he, before his trial? 
You know, that's a nice plasma. Don't you watch it, Harry? See, Conway was extradited a couple of days ago. Yes, when I know, I know. I saw it on the news, yes. Killed, tried to get away, yes, yes. So, you see, I do watch it. I do watch it. Now, um, what is this all about? Maybe it's about you standing, talking to Conway beside the car when Suzanne Fendleton came off that balcony. Matt. Nonsense, nonsense. I did chat with him, yes, but half an hour before anything happened. Uh, I was uh, inside when I heard the bang. Terrible, yeah. I came out and there she was. I have no idea where Conway was when it happened to her. Um, what did he say? What if it's not just something he said, Harry? What if we had a written statement? I don't statement think Mr. Mr. McIntosh just... needs to know. Oh, better get that. You know that statement's off limits. He's lying. Oh, you... Conway you... is lying. Oh, three for the price of one. Hi, boys. This is Doris. My appointment. Now, if you'll excuse us, uh, Doris wants to mix us a nice gin and tonic. Mr. McIntosh, we were just you leaving, realize... and we won't disturb you any longer. We're actually just leaving, Doris. I've got to see the apartment. No, you don't. It's just over in the city, and the door knock is in Fitzroy. Yeah, I've got to get a feel for the scene. How she died? Where they were standing? Six on... years ago. There won't be any feel, Matt. Drop it. Eddie you can come with me. We can get a cab to Fitzroy. You can get a cab, or you can come to your bloody senses and do this door knock. You want to put your dick on a chopping block? Do it in your own time. I'm keeping mine intact. Okay. Door knock it is, but um, I'm going to be late for work tomorrow, so maybe you can cover for me then. It's not too much trouble for your dick. <laughs> What the hell's going on? Good morning, Mr. Fendleton. I'm from Homicide. I know where you're from. My caretaker called me. What the bloody hell are you doing up here? You still own the apartment. I own the whole bloody block and I asked you a question. You know about um, Jim Conway's death? Yes, of course I do. Killed, trying to escape. Look, what is this? He's dead. Surely that means this is all over and done with now. What if I told you he actually killed himself? Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Conway was a coward. We avoided justice for six years, and when he finally got caught, he took the easy way out. How long do you think it'd take to fall from this height, Detective? I'm sorry, sir. I know this. What are you doing here, Detective? Your daughter's relationship with Jim Conway, did she ever talk about it? Not to me, why? Was she seeing anyone else at the time? Suzanne and I didn't talk about that kind of thing. She appreciated her privacy. I hardly ever came here when she was alive and I've avoided the place since her death. My wife wanted to keep this place exactly as it was so as she could come here and be with her, she said. I had the place redecorated. Put new tenants in as soon as I could. Do you know what she makes me do now? A wife, that is. Every Wednesday afternoon, I have to take her out to sit with Suzanne at the cemetery because she feels more present there. That's what the wife says. She'll never be present to me. She's just gone. Do you know Alex Zammett at all? I made contributions to three of his political campaigns. I went to a few fundraisers, but he's not what I'd call an intimate acquaintance. So you're convinced it was Jim Conway who killed your daughter? That's what this is. What do you think there's some sort of doubt? Who reopened this case? Look, sir, it's, it's not exactly... What's your name? Just show me your identification. Look, I don't want to... Now! Your... Mulholland. Waverley. Wolf. Thanks for coming up, Senior Sergeant. Yeah. Mr Fendleton's been uh, speaking to the Assistant Commissioner, who suggested to him that we might be able to clarify the situation. Hmm, of course. 
This young Ryan bloke says he wasn't officially involved in the case. But you just let your people run around bailing up citizens as and when they like, do you? I've spoken to Detective Ryan and he has admitted to being somewhat overzealous. Mr Fendleton, we're simply trying to establish the motive for Jim Conway's suicide. Detective Ryan isn't officially part of the inquiry. So why do you get involved? I noticed in the case notes the caretaker the had been The case notes meant to be returned to Detective I thought he read them I before don't the It's like Conway was forced to come back, Sergeant. You have been... any opinions, any theories, any facts, you will give them to Detective Davies. This is his investigation. So has Zammett been interviewed yet or are we waiting till he retires Detective Davies will work this investigation any way he sees fit and you, son, will calm down. And you, Dave, you can wipe that smile off your face and get upstairs to see the superintendent who was waiting to be briefed on your intended course of action. Go. If there's another copy of that case file floating around, get it's rid of it. I don't care. I don't want to hear it. Do it, Simon. The rest of the day, you are with Mapplethorpe delivering subpoenas. I will be instructing her to consider you a Siamese twin joint at the hip. Either that or you can take some time off. Why would I need to do that? You know why, you have an anniversary coming up. So I'm so good, Sarge. I don't need any time off. Fine, joint at the hip then. Subpoenas, delivery thereof. Word is, you're this far from losing the fancy suit. Study the humble tortoise. What? Pull your head in. You ready to go? No choice. Joined at the hip. Jennifer, keep him on a leash, OK? Sure. Under orders, eh? Don't worry. I'm backing off. Right, so that's why you're still running through old notes. Frank, what's the problem? Is he okay? No, just leave him where he is. I'll be there in ten minutes. I'm gonna make a detour. Max, I thought you said you were backing off. I'm supposed to. This be... is not about the Conway thing. It's personal. Ah! Callum, hey, geez, man. Hey. stop being a goose. Callum. You're only Callum. costing young Matt money. Dad, mate, that's hey. enough, eh? Hey? What do you think you're doing? Where did you spring from, mate? Frank called me. Frank, the bastard! No, 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 mate. He's just trying to look out for you, eh? But you know, it's too much booze, yeah? It doesn't agree with your medication. Yeah. My medication no bloody use. It doesn't work. Look oh, at me. It's all right, mate. I'll just take it easy. You know what day it is tomorrow. You haven't forgotten? Of course I do. It's all right, Dad, yeah? It can't be all right. It's just... It's not right. It's not bloody right! Hey, Dad. You've done now, mate, eh? Cut your hand, eh? Sorry, mate. It's all right. I miss her, maybe I miss her. I miss her too. Come on, eh? Let's get you home. He's a good bloke, young Matty. Sorry about this. It's okay. He's not a drunk. It's his medication. He has these um, blackouts. Mini blackouts, really. Most of the time, he's fine. Won't be long. Someone's coming over to look after him. Mum's sister's mother's mother. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Italians. It's fine, Matt. Is that your mum? Yeah. It's none of my business, but... She's dead. Well, at least that's the assumption. She disappeared. It was, um... Actually, the last photograph she had taken before it happened. How long ago? Sixteen years tomorrow. She tears him up. Worse than me, I think. It happened on my birthday. 
She was making a fennel salad, ran out of balsamic, went down to the shops. She never came back. I was just a kid at the time, there's nothing I could do. Well, maybe you're doing it now. We need to talk. No, you don't. You've got more for It's okay. To this deliver. won't take long. Matt? It's okay. Toilet. You think I'm bent, don't you? I never said that. Oh, you didn't have to. Why else are you on the case? Every time I talk to somebody, you've already been there. Why didn't you formally interview Harry McIntosh the first time around? Caretaker? I spoke to him on the night. He told me he saw nothing. Have you spoken to him since? Yes, this afternoon after you. And what about Alex Zammett? Get real, the parade aren't going to let me anywhere near a government minister. And that suits you just fine. You want to see how bent I am? How'd you like to sit in my next interview? Hmm? Hey. I've been thinking about what you said about Conway coming back from Spain for no good reason. I got in touch with one of the coppers who picked him up in London. He said Conway wasn't surprised when they arrested him. It's like he knew they were coming. Well, how'd they get the tip off? Anonymous phone call, mail. Plus, Conway hadn't booked a return flight because he knew he wasn't going back. So he was forced to come back here to face the music on Suzanne Fendleton. Correct. And there's only one bloke I can think of who had any interest in seeing that happen. And I know where to find him. Thanks for this. It's amazing what they can do these days, separating Siamese twins. I'll cover for you. Get rid of the rest of the subpoenas. I'd say you've got about three hours. Thanks. This is my gig, Ryan. See if you can manage to keep your mouth shut. I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. I'm suggesting, Walter, that it was you who forced Jim Conway to come back to Australia. And how did I do that? Wouldn't be hard to find out where he was living in Spain, would it? It's pretty common knowledge. And I've already checked, so I know you didn't travel. So what did you do? Phone him? Because we can check that out too. What if I did phone him? Why would I want him back here? Because it wasn't just Susan's life he took, was it? How did you get him to come back, Walter? I told him in no uncertain terms that if he didn't return to face justice, I would do to his mother what he did to my daughter. Take her up to some high place. Chuck her off. Always mother's in a wheelchair. Oh, for God's sake, I wouldn't have actually done it, but that, that scum had to be punished before I died. And how did he react to your threat? Oh, he carried on, pleaded with me. Don't hurt her. She's been through enough already. But I didn't back down. Then he started milling on about his innocence. Did he offer any alternatives? Certain government minister, perhaps? Well, Samus. <laughs> oh, you're not taking that seriously, are you? Tim Conway killed my daughter, and now he's killed himself. Yeah. He committed suicide to take himself out of the equation. Because he was afraid of the jail sentence. Maybe, but he was also scared that if he told the truth, you'd think he was lying and still carry out your threat. With him gone, there'd be no point doing that with them. Did he say anything to you about Harry McIntosh, the caretaker? He claimed that he knew the truth, that Samet had paid him off, but I, uh, I, I didn't believe that. I, I knew Samet, I'd met him, and so... So with Suzanne. Well, I've got nowhere to go now. Conway's mother deserves the truth, and... We have got somewhere else to go. What? The caretaker? You're joking. Not if we play by Mulholland's rules. So we don't. Tits in the ring of time. Oh, back here 
here to see Casanova, are you? Bit of a lad, is he, Harry? He's on with Norma as well, you know. Oh, here he comes, looking very pleased with himself. Where have you been? You and Norma had a bit of a win, did you? Why are you back? Same reason I have, Harry. We've come to take you with us, Harry. We know all about the deal you did with Alex Samet. That's preposterous. Harry, mate, either you tell us the truth and we protect you, or you wait for Zammet to realise how ugly this is getting and you take your chances with him. He's been paying for your silence so far. Maybe now he'll be looking for a more permanent guarantee. I knew this would come back and bite me on the backside. Did Jim Conway murder Suzanne Fennelton? No. It was Alex Samet. I was with Conway when it happened. We were having a smoke when the girl came over the balcony. Like right, whether this? Yeah. She didn't even scream, poor kid. What was Conway doing there? Alex Samet was one of the pollies he chauffeured for. It was Zammet who was seeing Suzanne. She was his um, bit on the side. Why didn't you come forward, Harry? Mate, I had nothing my whole life. Nothing. There I was, pushing 70, no super. And along comes Alex Samet, offering to set me up. He's a powerful man. Let's take the deal and enjoy a comfy retirement. Or tell him to shove it. And end up somewhere at the bottom of Port Phillip Bay. So, we're about to arrest a senior political figure. And Bill Mulholland is about to have a brain snap. You know what, Bernice? Oh, I know. I agree. Stuff Mulholland. <laughs> that Matt Ryan. He's lucky his bluff worked. Has he got a career death wish of some sort? He does what he thinks is right. They all count. There is one other thing, Bernice. There always is with you, Stanley. You get to be on the arrest with Davies. Thanks, Sarge. Don't screw it up. Sarge. One other thing, then. Don't you ever question my commitment to this job again. I might have to have one eye on the politics. The other one's always going to be on getting to the truth. Getting it right. For all of them. And get out. Gotta look good if you're gonna arrest a cabinet minister. One of the big ones ever land on my plate. Well, oh, mate, to mix metaphors, sometimes you actually have to go over the limb to have something land on your plate. Got the warrant. Ready to go? All set. Oh, yeah. Uh, thanks for, you know. Thanks. I need to pee. Jealousy does that to me. Really jealous, are you? Nah, no, no, good on him. He's got balls. Jesus, this is taking one of the guys thing a bit too far, isn't it? I need to ask you something. That guy you shot. What about him? How did you feel? I mean, did life just Go on as if nothing. Well, he was a low-life junkie. He was threatening me with what he said was a syringe full of HIV positive blood. I'd blow him away again. No problem. This is about the dead kid's mum wanting to talk to you, right? How did you know? Simon told me. Simon's got a big mouth. No argument from me. If you want my advice, I'd say, talk to the woman. I mean, it's obvious that you have a problem with what happened, even if you shouldn't. What's talking to her going to achieve? You want to stop the dreams, right? Is there any truth to this 
these allegations? No, of course not. It's all been a misunderstanding of the things. No, just think about your wife. I'm not a killer. Not like him. I trusted you. All right, that's enough. Let's go. Come on. Excuse me. Thank you. I'm done for the day. You'll be private in there. Thanks, ma'am. You'll be fine. It's funny, isn't it? When there's something you don't want to do, things have a way of conspiring to remind you that you really should do it. What things? Other mothers. Other sons. Doesn't matter, I'm still nervous. Well, if it's any consolation, so is Miss Semple. She was just talking to me. It seems I misread her motives. It's not a question of blame. It's not even about closure for her, really. Then what is it about? Well, she needs you to know she forgives you, I think. That she realises you had no choice. Everyone has their own way of dealing with grief. Detective. Something I'm feeling There's something that's wrong These streets are a feeling In the early morn The war was last known These wounds are not healed I can't do this anymore. Uh, she's not even there, Maddie. It's just an empty space by that photo. If he was there, there'd be some point. I'm not doing this again. Comes a time when we all.